Hello there good people, what is up? Welcome, my name is Marco and I'm a full stack developer. And this is a new episode where I build an Instagram clone. Now, this time, finally, the front end is done. If we take a look, this is the, the main page, then there is a profile and the login page, but the front end is basically done. So today I wanted to start developing the back end and starting from the database, which is uh, kind of the heart of a backend, of, a ser of the server side, where the data is stored. And so we need to think about how we want to store this data and uh, with what database. For today, I want to use MongoDB. Now, MongoDB is a non-relational database, non-SQL, which is a little bit different. It's basically document-based. All the records are saved in a JSON-like document. But this is super convenient because it's very fast to fetch data. It's super flexible because it's like a JSON file. And to be honest, I like to work with the MongoDB when I'm not thinking too much about relationships. Of course, relationships are not the strongest suit of this type of databases. But uh, when you really think about simple relationships or simple data schemas, it's very, it's very, it's totally fine to use this type of, uh, this kind of databases. So I'd say that we can start describing the data schema, the database schema. So basically what the database schema is, is how do I want to structure my data, my tables, my records. In this case, I want to have three models. The first model is going to be the user model then the Insta, and then the comments. Now the user, I'm going to have the username, the email and password, followed and followers, and of course the timestamps, that's standard. For the Insta, which is the actual picture, I want to have an author, the image URL, and the number of likes, and the description. Timestamps again. And last, the comments. There's gonna be an author, of course, the comment itself, and the Insta ID. Now, these lines represent kind of relationships. Of course, I said that this is not a relational database. However, conceptually, there uh, exist relationships between these models. For instance, to the user, uh, from the user to Insta, if you notice the username and the author must be the same. So we can say that there is a relationship between the username and the author. And in this case, one user can have many Insta. So we could say that there is a one to many relationship. And similarly, from the Insta to the comments, you can see that there is this Insta ID here. And this can be considered a relationship, a reverse relationship with the Insta model. And as before, one Insta picture can have many comments. So basically, I'm gonna have one to many relationships. And of course, the user and the comments are gonna share the author and the username. Now that we have the schema, let's start creating it in code. Now I have my SRC folder right here and inside here I want to create first of all a server.js file. Then I'm gonna open my terminal. Let's put it like okay and I want to npm init this. Uh, I want to get into my SRC folder so that I don't init the wrong thing. This will give me basically the package.json. From here, I can start installing npm packages and I can start working with my, with my server. So the first thing I wanna do is install Express and Mongoose. These are going to be the only two things that I need for this project right now. So let's see it install. Okay, so we can see that we have these dependencies right here. So now I want to go into my server.js and uh, let's say that this is going to be main server file. Okay, now we can even close this once. We don't need it. Another thing that I want to do is I want to create a folder which is models. Inside here, I will build the models. And the first one is going to be my user.js. 
I usually put it with a capital case just to, you know, remind myself that these are models. The second one we said it was the Insta model, so insta.js. And the third and last one is going to be the comment.js. Beautiful. Now, let's start from the user. It's probably the simplest. At the top, I need to import mongoose. Require mongoose like this. Okay. And then what I want, I have to create a schema. And to create a schema, I can just say, like, call it const, and for this is a user schema. Okay. And the user schema is a new mongoose dot schema. Inside here, I have to create an object. And this object will basically be the schema, so the types I want uh, to, to give to the document. As we said, we can even look back. We have a username, the email, password, followed, and follower. So we got the username. I said that this is going to be of type string. Okay, and it's going to be required. That's required. True. Then we're going to have an email. And this is also going to be, we can just put it string like this because it's not required in this case. Then we have a password. And this is going to be of type string as well. And it's going to be required. Of course, we need a password for our for our users. Then we said we got a followed, and this is going to be an array and a follower or followers. Well, followers. Let's do it like this. These are going to be arrays, basically collections of things. But we can also put it like this. If you just Create something like this. Mongoose will give the correct uh, typing into MongoDB. So basically, this is going to be a list of strings. Another thing that I said I need is the timestamp, but I'm going to put it outside. This is a um, options that you can put. If you see here, in I need to give it another object, and inside inside here timestamp, and this is true. And this is going to create the created at and updated at key without me doing anything. Now that I've done this, I can save it and I want to initialize the model. So the, the actual user, okay? And the user is going to be a new mongoose model. In this case, I need to put with the um, lowercase letter. I'm going to say the name of this model, so user. This is the name that it's going to have in the database. And then what schema I want to apply to this. In this case, I want the user schema. And one last thing, I need to export all this because, you know, I need to export it. And I'm gonna export the user model, like this. So basically now I can copy paste this so that I don't have to, I don't know, repeat anything. Insta, and now we're gonna have an Insta schema. Okay, this. And here I have the Insta, and this is going to use the Insta schema. Just a bit of setup here. Okay, beautiful. Let's come and save. Now, inside the schema, I will have, of course, the timestamps, but something different. Let's see. So I want the author. It's going to be a string, the image URL. This is very important. The number of like, the number of likes, and the description. So I said the author, this is going to be type string and required. Beautiful. Then I want uh, image URL. It's very important. This is going to be basically the background image, the, the Insta itself. This is going to be a string because it's just the URL. And of course, it's going to be required. Okay, then what I said, the number of likes, of course, is going to be likes, and this is, 
you can put it like type this is going to be number and um, it's not required but I can put a default value and the default is going to be zero of course when you create the insta picture it's just uh, there is no likes yet and then the description description and this is going to be a string and it's not required so I don't need to specify it okay so this is looking good author image URL likes and the description no perfect now it looks fine okay and we also have the timestamp now the comments so in the comments we have the author the comment itself and the insta ID okay so again let's copy paste this one comment C comment V and inside here I can say the comment schema okay here I would have the comment um, the capital letter at the beginning is um, is a convention so that you know that this is a model it's it's kind of a class so you differentiate it from from all the rest or, or from from methods let's say did I have user schema yeah this is wrong I need to give it an insta schema and save inside here I have to put it a comment schema yeah spelling is very important and then I export comment okay so the author is already here we don't need the image URL we don't need the likes nor the description but we need the comment itself and this is going to be string and it's going to be required because I mean I don't want to create a comment without a content after that I need an insta ID so basically what is the insta picture it's referring to and I want to specify the type of course this is going to be a string but also it's going to be required because I want that relationship they must be there it must be there after this I said that I want nothing auto common and insta ID oh, this is looking good all right so basically we now created the models the schema which is this one and we are creating the model and we are exporting this model so now we can go in our server folder or in our server file and create a boilerplate express app to do that I just need to do a nice import which is express this is going to be a require express and of course I want to import mongoose as well it's going to be require mongoose okay so now I have my two main things and I want to do um, app equal why application not application right it's app equal express okay and then I need to specify a couple of things which is app dot use express dot json so basically what this does is it parses the body of the request and this is going to be useful later when I send kind of json request to my API now that we have this I just need a port to listen to and to do that I'm going to declare a port this is going to be process.env.port or let's put 3000 for now after the port I'm going to listen and I'm going to listen on this port and then I have access to an async function in this async function I want to do a couple of things so this function is going to be an async function and I want to console log of course that let's use backticks oh my god I cannot find backticks here what was it oh it's nine yeah like this okay I am listening well I'm not listening so server is listening on port I'm just gonna put the port right here 
and then I want to basically await for another thing which is the mongoose.connect now in here I need to specify a mongo URI and when this happens I have a, another callback function and this is going to be another console log and I can say database is connected like this actually in here we can even remove this callback function because we are awaiting and you can do something like this you can provide a try catch block it's always a nice touch I catch the error if there is any and I'm going to console error the error itself uh, but when I've done this I want to console log database database is connected okay if I save it now I need to provide this mongo URI so I have it right here mongo URI SQL and let's put this I don't want this to be test but I want to be Instagram let's call it Instagram clone why not and then I want to just have a testing route we can specify it like this so there's gonna be this slash route then I'm gonna have a request a response and the error function is just going to send back very simple h1 like hello there this is for testing purposes only okay let's try this let's see if it works and to run it I just need to use node then the name of the file and everything should be fine so I got my server listening and I got my database connected let's try it on a page so if I go to my local host 3000 I have hello there so the API is working it seems to be working fine and the only thing that I want to do is to actually import the models one last thing so let's import the models now I said that the user I can say hmm, const user equal require and since this is a file I need to get it from the actual folder from the actual file so I'm going to go into the models and then user and this is going to be the same for insta and comment but this is going to be insta and this is going to be comment so basically just like this I have my models right here and I can use it all right so this is pretty much done and uh, I'd say this was a quick one but again the database and the schema is fundamental for your backend applications so again I have a user model I have the insta and I have the comment in the next episode I'm going to build finally the authentication and authorization and for that I'm going to use the user model because if I want to sign up a user I need to you know show up the sign sign up form where you're gonna put where you, they're gonna put the username, the email, it's not required so, but the password, and uh, they're gonna start from there. And I'm going to show you as well how to save a user because there are some very, you know, so there, there are some best practices when saving users, and they are mainly concerned with storing the password. We don't want to store it as plain text, so we're gonna need to hash it and encrypt it. I mean, there's gonna be some some work involved. But for now, I say this is all. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like and share. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this one. This project is going to be, is going to go on for a long time now. And uh, if you really want to stay tuned, just don't forget to subscribe. For now, this is all. Thank you very much and bye-bye.